But I got to get to business. We are in a series called In the Spirit. And I we really laid heavy on my, my heart in the last couple of months how God wants us to have that life in the Spirit. That is the main goal of every believer. And I said last week, we've heard a million messages and they're all good on, 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 on things of the Bible, on things, you know, how to act, how to, you know, change your life and that. But the main focus that God was getting across through was to live a life in the spirit. To live that life in the spirit. Last week, we talked about walking in the spirit. How many remember Walking in the Spirit. How many applied some stuff last week but walking in the Spirit? Brandon, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I want to just encourage you to continue to, to do that. We're going to look at it. Uh, there, uh, when you look up on our screen, uh, just quick review, fast review. You can put that back up, Gord. We're coming out of Galatians 5 where God talks about, or Paul talks about through Paul, uh, about life and walking in the spirit. By the way, I want to make it very clear that he's not talking to sinners. Paul is not talking to sinners. He's talking to the church. And so I put a thing on Facebook this week. I got a lot of hits. And it said, I said, if Paul was, a, if Paul was here today, we would be getting a letter. <laughs> the church would be getting a letter, Amen. And I got amazing hits on it and some great comments and everything. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's true. So he's talking to the church. And so when we walk in the spirit quickly, I get my notes because uh, walking in the spirit is a consciousness of God with you. There it is there. It's pursuing him with all your heart. When you pursue the Lord with all your heart, you have a consciousness that he's there. He's with me when I go in the grocery store, the gas station, church, at home, upstairs, downstairs. He, I have a conscious awareness that he's there. Amen. He's not just in the church on Sunday. He's with me constantly. And so that's the first step. And you need to be filled with the spirit to be empowered. You need to be filled with the Spirit to be empowered. And the Spirit, though, can be turned off. We talked about that. You can turn the Spirit off or ignore the Spirit. So it's a path to surrender. And being led by the Spirit should be a natural, and I'm heavy on this, a natural lifestyle to us. If you believe in God, you're saved. By grace, it should be a natural lifestyle to walk in the Spirit. Amen? In other words, he needs to be included in everything. In everything. And I love using Jerry's. Jerry's not with us, but they've gone away. But his example last week was he tried it. He was at work, and he had a situation that... He really couldn't figure it out. So he asked the Lord. He said, I'm going to ask the Lord. And the Lord told him what to do, and it was right. Imagine that. That's walking in the Spirit. And But then again, we got a, um, I just put down here, you know what? He's only a thought away. He's only a thought away. But then the Lord spoke to us last week. How many remember that? Right here in this place. And this is what he said. Receive you this day my life. Receive you this day my life. And then he said this. I have given you this life. I have given you this life. I want to thank the Lord for that. He said a few other things. But that the, the main focus was I have given you this life. In other words, we can attain this life. And remember that scripture up there. <clears throat> it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. How's your freedom today? How's your freedom today? 
And so anyways, we moved from that. That was quickly walking in the spirit. Today, I'm going to talk about life in the spirit. Life in the spirit. Galatians 5, 24 and 25. I love to go back. This is our main focus of the whole series was in the Galatians. But it says, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. But listen to this. Since we live by the Spirit, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Remember I said last week, we can turn him off or we can ignore him. But the Lord is saying, keep in step. Let's keep in step. So what is life in the Spirit? Paul explains it like this, Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Living life in the Spirit can be described as a way of setting our hearts on the leading of the Holy Spirit. According to Paul, we all have areas in our lives which are of God, every one of us, and very pleasing to him. But then we got other areas that are not so good. Can I get an amen? Paul understood that only by living in the Spirit can we continue to build up those parts that are pleasing and gradually do away with the parts that are sinful and displeasing. It's the only way. And he was realistic on how challenging this can be. It is. And one of the most famous scriptures of all, and I... This is just amazing. Paul says this in Romans 7, 15. I do not understand what I do. For, I, for what I want to do, I don't do. But what I hate, I do. Hello? <laughs> this is Paul, the greatest apostle of all. He's got an issue. I'm in good company. Paul, the guy that wrote one-third of this in the New Testament. He wrote one-third of the New Testament. That's one-third more than me. And yet, he's got issues that he's dealing with daily. Sometimes in my own experience, that they confirm this dilemma. But you're a pastor. You're supposed to be perfect. Hello? Each of us have our own form of erratic behavior. Each one of us. And if you say you haven't, you're deceived. At one point, we can be generous, and in another set setting, completely selfish. Can we? Kind and thoughtful one moment, and the next moment, angry and intolerant. Is that you? That's me. <laughs> so I ask you, is this the way God wants us to live? Is this the way he wants us to live? Does he want us to be controlled by the Holy Spirit one moment and by our selfish desire the next? And this is what Paul says about it. In Romans 8, 5, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Listen, God wants us to be able to know whether our thoughts come from Him, from the Holy Spirit, from the devil or from our own fallen nature. Amen? Can you tell the difference? 
Can you tell the difference? He doesn't want us to be left wondering whether our thoughts and actions are pleasing to him. I sometimes wonder about me. I really do. He wants us to know and recognize when our behavior is of him and when it is not. Amen? And we all go through this. And he wants to assure us that we have the power of the Holy Spirit to help us grow in our ability to discern God's will and the movement of his spirit within us. Are you assured this morning? So it's clear that if we want to live the life in the spirit, we have to look at the way we think and act. Start asking yourself questions. This is a great way all through the day. Why is it that I can be so kind towards some people and so cold to others? Amen? Why am I so happy in the morning and upset at midday? And I think we need to ask the Holy Spirit to probe us and examine our hearts. Amen? Because that's the core of living in the Spirit. That is the absolute core of living in the Spirit. God, why do I do that? I don't know, son, but we're working on you. Yeah. And don't worry, I'll prompt you the next time it happens. And we're working on you. I don't have to be perfect right now. The Holy Spirit is doing a work. Amen? And ask the Spirit to show you what is good in us, what can stay, and what has to go. What is it in my life that's got to go, Lord? I want to live this life in the Spirit. And we also need to be persistent and allow the wisdom of the Spirit to sink in. Amen? That's when you're going to see change. That's when you're going to see change. Amen? But you can be confident in that. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Say, he lives in me. Amen. And the reason why we know this is the Bible says it. I can be more than a conqueror. <laughs> Amen. I can be more than conqueror. And with God's grace, you can overcome every area in your life that is controlled by sin. And we become more holier each day. We don't become holy right off the bat. It's a, it's a work. But we can become holier each day. Is that you this morning? It's me. Man, I need to work. I know it's okay. It looks good right now, but guess what? It's only 20 after 11. Wait until this afternoon. I probably need some work. But the Holy Spirit is there to help and guide me. Amen? That's how cool God is. Most of us, maybe even all of us, are a mixed bag. Some of our behaviors and thinking are of the spirit and some of the flesh. But we do have this hope. We don't have to conform to the ways of the world and with a little bit of an effort each day, we can be transformed as our minds are renewed. Amen? Thanks the Lord for that. Romans 12, 2. Let's read that. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And we can come to know all that is good and acceptable and perfect by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Which he freely gives. 
which he freely gives. These are the things that will move us to please God in everything we do and cause us to want to live in the Spirit. So it's absolutely essential if you are a believer in Christ Jesus to live in the Spirit. It's, it's absolutely essential. Because it said walking and living go hand in hand. Can't walk in the Spirit and not live in it. They go hand in hand. Amen? Paul says in Galatians 5.16, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So if you're struggling with this life in the Spirit, let me give you four tips. Just basic tips on how to accomplish life in the spirit. We've got to have some kind of, uh, you know, what do you call it? Not a road map, but practicalities, practical things to do. First one is this. Recognize what the acts of the sinful nature are. Recognize them. You'll find them in Galatians 5, 19 and 20. Paul says, put to death all. Not some, all, all acts of our sinful nature. This doesn't just happen. There's work to be done. It's a choice. We can choose to walk in the flesh or in the spirit. Amen? The second thing is, understand that, and this is heavy, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's heavy. That hit me like right there. Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5.21. If we are true followers of Christ, we'll live differently, won't we? Jesus said we'll be known by our fruit. How is your fruit today? Well, my fruit's going a little bad. <laughs> Maybe I need Lord, the Holy Spirit to do a little watering and fixing. Hallelujah. The third thing is recognize the fruit of the Spirit. We're going we're gonna to learn more about that in a couple of weeks. But they can be found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I'm going to read that. This is a really good checklist. Some of these things I have no problem. Some of these things I have problems. And some of these things, God just got me like, okay, we've got to go around this again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Ooh, that hurt. Against such things, there is no law. I found myself the other day sitting there giving myself the checklist, the, the one out of tens. Faithfulness, yeah, I put myself up there, nine. Gentleness, well, I'm gentle, I think. Self-control, today I have. I'll give myself a ten there. And the Lord's saying, you know what? It's every day, my boy. <laughs> we need to work, and I'm going to help you. And the number four is living by the Spirit will produce the fruit of the Spirit. Look at 5, 20, 25 of Galatians. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. This means we should seek and walk in these fruits in all that we do in life. In every situation that we find ourselves in. And that's what I find myself doing now because I've been into this so much and I've been delving into this and the Lord's been downloading things is wherever you go and whatever you do, you know that nine list that, of the fruit. 
you keep it here, and when you're out there, you know, okay, we're going to need a little patience. God help me with the patience. Ooh, there's an old lady that can't get over that ice. I'm going to go and help her with a little kindness. Amen? These are, you know, we laugh at these things, but we need to keep those. God says we'll be known by our fruit. That's the fruit. There is no other. That is it. There's, that's the list. And so if I'm going to be known by it, boy, I better learn it. And I better demonstrate it. Hallelujah. So what's God saying to you today? I think he's speaking to every one of us. Because we all need some work in some area. Every one of us. Amen? I'm like Paul when he said, I'm the worst. He says, I'm the worst. So I want to do something. I want to take a moment. And ask the Holy Spirit, we're going to do this. We're going to take a moment. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to identify the areas we need at work or work at. And allow them to gracefully work in our lives and become more like Jesus and less like the world. Amen? We need to be more like Jesus and less like the world. So I'm going to pause for a minute. And you can just go to them personally and ask them. Lord, I know I need work. I'm the worst person when I get behind the wheel of a car. Amen? Got somebody over here nodding. So it's not a lie. And I don't know why, but it just... Is it because there's too many people on the road? No, the Lord says no. In fact, I need work. I really do. So I'm going to ask the Lord right now. You know, Lord, I need some work. So let's take a moment. Let's just give it up to the Lord. I wasn't going to open the altar up because I know we'd all be here. So we might as well just stay in our seats, take a moment, and just give up and ask the Lord. Lord, I need some help in this area or this area. I need some help in all these nine areas. Let's just take a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not stopping because I only have one thing. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to put a challenge out for the week. And then challenge each one of us this week to listen to the Holy Spirit and make a conscious effort to be obedient to what He asks. It might be something that you just might, for me, I, I know, you know, there could be a lineup outside of the opera house or something. He might tell me to go and get in it. You want work on patience? We'll put you in his position. But 
might be to be kind. I don't know. It might be something else out of the fruit that he's working on. It just might be something where he says, I just want you to kind of hang with me in your mourning. And don't be so fired up about getting up and going. Give me a little time. But whatever it is, and I don't know, who knows, he may want to clean something up. So we can walk a little closer, amen? But I believe that's where he's taken us. He wants us to walk and live in the spirit because he is spirit. He is spirit. And we're his kids. We really are. I'm so glad I'm his kid. Uh, yeah, me. <coughs> Phil, that crazy, mixed up, strange character, God called him. <laughs> but he's not done with me. And he's not done with you. Amen? So I think if we learn to walk, live, and next week's going to be really great because we're going to see about seeing in the Spirit. That's a heavy one. We're going to learn how to see in the Spirit. This is cool. And I hate to pick on Linda back there, but she sees in the Spirit like unbelievable. And when she comes up, and, and, and we're going to give her liberty, anybody liberty, after we learn to see in the Spirit. When we see stuff, we want to know about it. We do. We want to know about it. A couple of weeks ago, Linda was here. And she comes to me and she says, wow, you know, in worship, I saw flags over every person in the place, everyone, and they were just hovering. I was thinking, that's pretty important. Was there one over me? Yes, there was. Okay, great. <laughs> but these things, you know, I want to see in the spirit. I want to see what God's doing. I want to know. What's happening? Amen? It's going to be exciting. And then the following week, we're going to talk about the fruit. That's going to be really good. You might want to invite somebody. Amen? So God's doing a work with us. He is. He really is. He's doing a work with us. I mean, we're going through all this, not for the sake of knowing it, not for the sake of, well, that's, that's another great message. Well, I wonder what's... No, he's doing this for a purpose. For a purpose. Amen? And so we're so glad, first of all, that we hear from him. We need to hear from him. Amen? Think about that. Last week, this is what he said. Receive you this day, my life. I have given you this life. I think I'd like to delve into that life, that spiritual life. Amen? Come on, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are so real to us. And you, you are spirit. And that where the spirit of you is, there is freedom. Father, we're searching for that freedom. And I pray for each and every one that are here with us today and online. That in this week, Lord, that you would show us even a closer view of this spiritual life. How to walk and how to live in it. Father, we have given up everything of the flesh and we just we just want to know more about your good will your good and pleasing will lord i just pray a blessing over each one here today and the ones that are joining us and i would say lord today that you would lay favor on each one 
That's the tangible evidence for each one this week to know that you're calling them out of the world and into your spiritual life. I pray that today in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Amen and amen. So we got a challenge. We got a challenge. Next week, it should you just put, you know, hey, guess what? Yeah, I was walking in the spirit this week. Yeah, I got behind a bunch of people in the drive-thru, and I never did once yell at them, hurry up. Stop. Just order a coffee. Get out of my way. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> it's a drive-thru for coffee. It's not for food. Keep going. <laughs> but I hope, you know what, the Lord shows you something and works on something, and you can come back and say, wow, you know what? I'm changed. I'm changed. Amen? God bless you all.